This is Japanese ceremonial It's good on a cold day. Throughout your life, you're going to come across teachers, people who teach you things, people who teach you ways of doing things. You'll probably start off with your parents, who teach you how to walk and how to talk, and then you'll move on to other family members, family friends, and then even your friends will teach you things. And then you're going to come across teachers in books and in television. And today I'm going to introduce you to one of my teachers, one that I met online. His name is Alan Watts. Uh, and so in the same way, we confuse happiness with status and we confuse ourselves as living organisms which are one with this whole universe with something we call our personality and what I understand as Alan Watts is a big act which is not really me I've been listening to Alan Watts for about three years now and he's had he's had a pretty good effect on my life you know he's really changed the way I see the world in a way uh, that it wouldn't be fair to you if I kept him a secret. Now I'm going to start by giving you a quick biography of the man. Alan Watts was born 1915 in the UK. His mother was the teacher at a school where I guess some of the students were children of missionaries who were traveling to China. Now one of the things that these missionaries would do is they would come back and give gifts from these faraway lands to the teachers of their children. And so Alan Watts's mother collected a vast amount of like Chinese and I guess Asian art. So from an early age, uh, Alan Watts was exposed to and influenced by Asian art. Now, from what I can understand, Alan Watts was also very much involved in, um, I guess you could say, Catholic theology, Christian theology. Um, I think he went to school to be a priest, actually. Anyhow, so he had these, he had grown up with in between two worlds uh, the western theological world where they had the belief of a father god that was watching over his creation and then he was exposed to the eastern world the eastern philosophies of uh, very uh, we're all one with the universe meditating and zenism and buddhism and all this and alan watts was born in a time when when the east didn't understand the west and vice versa so when america and europe didn't understand uh, china and India uh, in terms of their philosophical views, their religious views, and their cultural their cultural ways in general. Um, there was like a gap of knowledge between the Western Hemisphere and the Eastern Hemisphere, which has since been filled in thanks to people like Alan Watts. And Alan Watts was like this philosopher that was right in the middle of them too, and he would talk about Eastern culture and he was teaching it to the West when this was like totally new to us at the time. This is 1950s, by the way. You know, it was a basic teaching in Buddhism that the root of all human suffering is clinging or grasping. Uh, just in the same way as I was suggesting on a previous program, that you can't cling to your breath without losing it. You have to let go of your breath. And for that reason, the word that is used in Buddhism for this experience, it's another word, familiar to you all, nirvana, literally means blow out. <sighs> Don't hang on. Alan Watts did a lot of TV programs like this. He also did a lot of lectures and he recorded everything. And we are super lucky because all of this, at least a lot of it, can be found on the internet. Just hours and hours of him talking about subjects like love and God and Oh my God, like what a great way to pick your brain or put your, or put you to sleep. I mean, depending on your mood. There's so much to talk about. Gosh, I'll never finish this video. So here you'll see he looks a lot younger than some of the other pictures I've showed you already. Now, this is because it's in the 1950s, but the 1960s and the 1970s, this is when I think Alan Watts really shined because, well, as you all know, the 1960s and the 1970s, there was a big hippie movement. There was a psychedelic revolution. Flower power was taken over over the West and people, young people, were desperate for for uh, teachings outside of their culture, for, uh, for a larger experience, I guess, a more wholesome experience. And Alan Watts, Alan Watts was in the perfect place and at the perfect time and people loved him. He was publishing books. I haven't read any of his books, I have to confess, but I mean, he covers a lot of it in his lectures. Um, 
I mean, he was in the perfect place. People loved him. And this is when he would have all these lectures all over America. He came to Canada, too. And we still have a lot of these recordings, I mean, on the Internet. You know what I mean? And so they're still popular. Some of them have tens of millions of views to this day. Isn't that crazy? His teachings, his words help me get in the moment. They help me appreciate the moment and get with it, you know? Alan Watts does such a great job at exploring ideas and concepts. And he's such a passionate and captivating speaker. Like, I hope to speak half as good as he does one day. And like, I really encourage you to go check out his work. Go, go listen to his lectures. He's, uh, he does such a great job at making you think and questioning everything. And that's so important. Like, like listen to this guy. You know what it is. This, the both of the systems are mythological. The system of the universe controlled by the divine master has at least the virtue of being alive. There is somebody who cares upstairs. <coughs> the other system, uh, where everything is just mechanical, um, is, is really a state of mind. Uh, it's invented by people who want to insist that they are very hard-boiled. They would say to the people who believe in God, you are just a lot of wishy-washy people who have indulged in wishful thinking. You want to think that there is somebody up there who cares. Now, as a matter of fact, there isn't. The universe in which we live is one which is totally stupid. And that we happen to be intelligent and feeling human beings is a mere accident. We are a fluke. We are a mere chance in the middle of this mindless mass of rock and fire. And because we know this, we are the tough guys, we are real hard-boiled, and we don't indulge in wishful thinking.